Hi everyone, I'm Steve Singer, Senior Vice President of Publisher and Developer Relations at Nintendo of America. And I'm Mariko Kimoto, Director of Partner Management at Nintendo of America. On behalf of Nintendo and our friends at Riot Games, it's our pleasure to introduce this presentation from Riot Forge. As many of you know, the League of Legends universe is both vast and varied, with so many stories to tell. Today, we're delighted to share a closer look at several of those stories, which will be coming soon to the Nintendo Switch system, including Hextech Mayhem, a League of Legends story, which launches later today. And, of course, there will be world-first reveals to enjoy here, too. We're excited for players to venture into the world of Runeterra on their Nintendo Switch systems, and this is just the beginning. Indie developers from around the world are collaborating with Riot Forge to bring a wealth of innovative experiences to life. We can't wait to share the visions of these talented creators with all of you. So let's get to it. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate the kind words. And hi, everyone. Welcome to our show. My name's Leanne. I'm the head of Riot Forge. And I'm Rowan. I'm the creative director of Riot Forge. Riot Forge is Riot Games' third-party publishing division. We've been working on Riot Forge for a few years now, and we get to work with some awesome partners from all around the world. And these partners are really focused on building completable League of Legends games. It's all about stories. We want to tell really great stories in these games. And that's why we're super excited to be partnering with Nintendo. The Switch is the perfect platform for these games. We've created this deep universe for 11 or so years. Yeah. There's over 150 epic champions in League of Legends. Riot Forge games are going to let you get up close and personal with our champions like never before. League of Legends has never had storytelling in games like this before. Until now. Yeah, and our developers are working on some awesome stories with some of our favorite champions. So we're extremely excited to share that with you today. Um, and I think we should get the show started. Let's do it. Let's do it, let's yeah. go. try to create games that try to answer two questions. Where is the beautiful and where is the crazy? The wall of Runeterra is populated by hundreds of mighty heroes. But as a creator, I was always more interested in the wrinkles. And the wrinkles are those little tiny details that define our humanity. And there is this tiny little child, Nunu. And Nunu, in this wall of war, is just looking for his mother. And that was the kind of story you want to tell. Song of Nunu is a single player narrative adventure. And as a Nunu, you are looking for your mother. It's a road trip you are doing with your best friend. Wulump is like the biggest teddy bear you have ever seen. It's like a father or a protector to Nunu. And with Wulump, you move through the Freljord, this frozen land. The Freljord is an inhospitable and forgiving wasteland. But in this land, if you look here, you have the Notai. The Notai don't believe in war. They believe in stories. As the Notai say, you cannot kill a story and you cannot kill a song. Nunu is a Notai boy and he has a magical flute. He can make different elements in the environment react to its notes and to its sound, solving the different challenges we encounter in the game. If you play the flute and it's a melody he likes, uh, he will dance with you. But if you start making bad noises, he closes his ear and complaining like, stop that. And if you don't stop, then he throws a snowball at you. We put so much care into the relationship between Nunu and Willum. They play together, they love together, they cry together, they take care of each other. The Freljor is a magical environment, and this game is all about adventure. Players are going to be able to explore new and exciting places they have never seen before. 
you will jump, you will climb, you will ride jetties. And the good thing about kids riding a jetty is that no matter how hard the environment, everything feels like a roller coaster. What are you doing? This is a story about the friendship between two very different beings and how they grow to love each other. This again about friendship, pure, innocent joy, hope, and family. Thanks, Willem. I couldn't do it without you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Rhythm game induces a flow state, a state of heightened mental flexibility that allows the subject to master the tempo! <laughs> Boring! Nobody's gonna play our game if you make it sound like homework! When Riot Forge approached us, they said, what champions would you be interested in? Immediately, Zig stood out as this unhinged, wacky, little puffball of mayhem. And Heimerdinger is sort of this archetype of the, the old, you can't do that kind of character. What? And you put someone that doesn't care about essentially anything will blow everything up with someone that says you can't do that. And I will let you build this ball. And it's just magic. Good to be back! In Hextech Mayhem, you play as Ziggs, and the idea is that you are causing as much mayhem as possible. Go forth, my beautiful bomb! Go forth and explode to your heart's content! <laughs> Hextech Mayhem was inspired by basically a mashup of the auto rhythm runners that we've had in the past and like a guitar hero or a rock band gameplay mashed together. I wouldn't want to say that Hextech Mayhem is a rhythm game. It is a music game. What that means is all of your inputs are explicitly tied to the music. That includes the rhythm, that includes the melody, that includes the bridges, the verses, and all of that. So you are playing along explicitly to the music. The music really drives the gameplay. So when I'm playing, I just get a smile on my face, and it's like, this music is just so happy and fun, and I'm bouncing around to it. But there are multiple levels of gameplay in this game that we've never done in the past. There's what we call the freestyle mayhem system. So there's all the prompts, and if you play them, you do it right. But then there's also hidden prompts that are not visible. They're all musical. So if you are listening to the music and you're attuned to it, you can cause tons of extra mayhem for extra bonus points and ranks, and you know, and that's the only way that you can achieve a challenger rank. Now can we stop this buffoonery already? <laughs> but there's so much room for improvement, I'm doing it. I'm only getting started. Our flavor comes out through a lot of the frantic nature of the gameplay, the animations and the artistic representation of these champions that we hope is going to look fresh to League players, but also familiar. Hextech Mayhem really is for both the casual player who just wants to play a single player League of Legends story, but also the mastery player who wants to dominate whatever game they play. I am unstoppable! This is preposterous, Ziggs! I know! Isn't it the best?
we've been pretty radio silent for at least a year or two. You may remember us from the Game Awards where we showed a little teaser. And let me tell you, the game has evolved considerably since that day. Oh, look! It's our favorite sniveling Blither. We've been waiting ages to beat you up. Oh, yeah? Well, no time like the present. Convergence is a story about Echo and Zahn, this polluted city in Runeterra. Echo uncovers this plot by a group of chem barons, the organized crime of Zahn. It's a time travel story where he needs to save his city. A few years back, we got a phone call from Riot Forge. My partner called me up and said, hey, uh, Riot wants to make a game with us. And um, my second child was just born. He called me, I was literally at the hospital, and I thought he was just messing with me. So I was like, I think it's a prank caller, Dan. I don't think this is, this is real. It turns out it was, and uh, we, were, we were pretty happy about that. Double selling games typically have uh, a lot of combat and have a beautiful 2D art style and Speed Brawl is our latest game. Riot essentially told us, we have a bunch of champions, which one do you want to work with? And we settled on Echo, we settled on Zahn. Speed Brawl is a lot about focusing on the combat, but in Convergence, you're exploring, you're discovering. We focus way more on the action platforming part of it. Yeah. We go deep into who Echo is, developing his character and his story. Convergence is set in Zon, but it's Zon through Echo's eyes. Echo is a teenage inventor, and he has created this incredible device called the Zero Drive, which allows him to rewind time. One major challenge was to make rewind feel more than just an undo button. It's about if you have information for the future, how can you make that useful so you can actually mess up, go back in time, change your tech, and then go back and outsmart your enemy. There's definitely been a few games that have played with time control, but what's unique about Convergence is that you can control every moment. You essentially have a character that doesn't make mistakes. Anytime he does something that he wants to fix, he just has to rewind it. Convergence was built to allow you to control time, to really strategize, because that's what being Echo is all about. My name's Echo. Oh yeah, I can rewind time. Remember, from here on out, it's Captain Fortune. The goddess granted me a vision. The black mist enveloping in the world. If the black mist has returned, I will drive it back. I'm not losing my city to the delusions of some second-rate king. Welcome to the wild, no hero. The dark Swallow everything. With our combined might, no challenge is too great. I won't abandon my duty. Not again. It's time for the truth to come to light! For what you seek, he stirs the mist. Maybe we are doomed. When the giants call and ask you what you want. Goddess forsaken us. Come on, we've taken some hits, but we're not done yet. Move yourself and rise, rise. Pull under. There is only one queen. My.
I'm Joe Matarera. I'm the CEO and creative director at Airship. Ruin King is an RPG with turn-based combat. Knock him down. And you play a group of champions that are from all parts of the world. They converge in Bilgewater, which is this town of like traitors and rogues and thieves. Some live there, some are just transient and visiting for who knows what purposes. Hear that? Something just moved out there. The player's goal is to stop whatever oncoming threat is happening. And it's the rebirth of the Ruined King. It's a story largely about misfortune in Illawi. And these are characters with a kind of a strained history. You know, they're sometimes friends, sometimes foes, they're having to work together. Illawi. It's been a while. I was starting to think you were avoiding me. You throw in a guy like Brahm, who's just bringing positivity to, like, every scene. This will be fun, yes? Yasuo and Ari, who, you know, they're kind of dealing with, like, ghosts of their past, and they're, they're kind of bonding over that. Ari? But they have a lot of secrets. I need to control myself. And then you have Pike, who's just crazy. We wanted to make sure each combat was challenging. We don't really want you to just like mindlessly hit one attack and then, oh, now it's a boss and use strategy. So lots of the creatures have unique mechanics. We added a lane system where you can actually modify the speed of your abilities and it'll also modify the powers. And that will let you do things like, I need to heal before my character dies and I see the enemies doing an attack. I can perform an ability in the speed lane and get the heal off in time. Or I got a bunch of buffs built up on Yasuo and I'm gonna do his like big attack in the power lane. It's gonna be slower, but it's gonna multiply all of those buffs even more. It just adds a sort of a third dimension to the combat that no other game I've seen has. Combat is separate from the exploration aspect. This division of combat and exploration allows us to really put forward the artistry of the team by highlighting the design of the characters, the animation, the visual effects. We've basically taken what's worked in our previous couple games and refined it. I think we've taken bow chasers and cranked it up a notch. So I think this game is, is uniquely airship because of that marriage between really fun, like kind of grounded in tradition role-playing mechanics, but brought into the modern era with this great visual wrapper. Because of my background in comics, I approach everything as sort of like, what is the comic book version of this character or this scene? This can't be happening. Everyone from role-playing fans to people who are adjacent are gonna get something out of this game. It's not just for League of Legends players. It's a story that anyone can jump into and understand you know, digesting the beauty of the world to, you know, really grinding your gears and trying to figure out the strategies and tactics to get through hard and difficult battles to League fans who have always wanted to take a step away from the competitive game what the? and just live in the world. Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us. We are at Riot Games with Ryan and Joe from Airship and we are going to talk about Rune King, a League of Legends story because it is out today. So we are super excited and welcome guys. It's Thanks great to have you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah. yeah, it's a pleasure out today. It's really awesome. Yep. So guys, I mean, we love Battle Chasers. Uh, we love the work you've done before. We're going to get to see a lot of Rune King today. The game is out now. Can you just, you know, ease us in? Tell us what are we in store for for Rune King? Yeah, I mean, in a nutshell, it's a dungeon crawler and turn-based RPG that features the awesome champs from, from League of Legends. Very, uh, it has some similarities to the first RPG we did, Battle Chasers, but really evolves it in some key ways, most notably in the presentation of the story. Uh, 
Battle Chaser is skewed much more heavily towards the dungeon crawling, and while there's still plenty of that in Ruin King, this is where we we're given our first chance to really double down on, on story. Story is the key difference, I think. Ruin King is going to be the single biggest story we've ever told for League of Legends in a game. Mm -hmm. Like, this is easily, you know, the biggest story beat we've, you know, ever done. Yeah. Like, I can't wait for players to get their hands on it. The most champions, deep relationships. The most champions, we get to go to some places that we've never been able to take players to before. I mean... Oh, yeah, and the script ended up being huge. I don't even know how many pages it is, but <laughs> it, for us, like, it, it's the most story we've ever done in a game we're, as we're well. We're over so. 100,000 lines at this point, yeah. like, easily. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And many VO sessions with uh, some amazing actors, That's quite right. honestly, like some yeah. really great ones. So. I think hearing the VO and like, watching the scenes uh, come to life is one of my favorite parts of the process because you never know how the, the lines are going to land or if the humor is going to work. And then hearing it, hearing the actors perform it and getting it in the game is like amazing. I think the, 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 the this real starting point was that we knew we wanted to do Bilgewater as yeah. the focus. Yeah. I remember. And then it, and then yeah. it was like, um, who, like, what champs would make sense? Obviously, you have Misfortune, Alawi, and we didn't want everyone to be from Bilgewater because it's cool to experience the city through the eyes of, of you know, someone from foreign lands. And then yeah. so we had, you know, uh, Yasuo and Ari from Ionia and Brom from the Frail Yard. What was it about Bilgewater which, you know, caught your guys' eye or caught your attention? I mean, I knew, like, you know, the artists in particular would get excited about, uh, like, we love, like, pirates and that theme, uh, morally gray characters, yeah. and, like, it just was, just for that reason, like, you know, storytelling and visuals, it would just, like, got us the most excited. And then it happened to have characters that actually have really cool stories happening, cool relationships, you know, with misfortune. Yeah. And Alawi, and like obviously the Shadow Isles being right next door. You get the Shadow Isles as a uh, as a bargain when yeah, you get Bilgewater. Exactly. So it just um, it came together really quickly uh, for us. It was an intimidating choice though because when we decided that that's where we wanted to set the game, I, it was almost immediate. Uh, but we almost tried to talk ourselves out of it just because of the challenge of of trying to bring a city like Bilgewater to life. Mm. And the team working on the game isn't huge, but we felt pretty dedicated to, to trying, and we really couldn't look away from that challenge. Mm. Uh, and it was it was a challenge, but now when you run around in Bilgewater and, and seeing that we really pulled it off, it's, it's so much fun just to get lost in Bilgewater and, and explore it. Yeah, and the game is just gorgeous. So you guys have done an amazing job. Every time I play, I just find something else in Bilgewater, like another creature or another NPC that I'm just like, oh, this is really cool, I get to experience. That's the fun part about finishing a game is when you get to close to the end, that's when you can really start focusing on those, the, the fun yeah. moments like that, the, the little secrets, Easter eggs, mm -hmm. uh, little additional, you know, love letters to the IP, to people who are familiar with League. Yeah, um, yeah we've had a lot of fun with it in the last uh, six months. And of course, like we did with Battle Chasers, really any game we've worked on, even pre-airship, dungeon crawling is important. So having that space to build you know, puzzles in the way that we do and the champs each having some unique uh, way of interacting with the environment. Some involves combat, some of it involves uh, solving puzzles. We were glad that we got to infuse you know, League of Legends with a, with a bit of dungeon crawling. So we've got someone playing live with us here today, so it'd be great just to have a, you know, walk through and talk about what we're seeing. Yeah, so at, just from the beginning, isometric camera, 3D dungeons, as soon as you touch a, a creature or if they, if they come in contact with you, go to sort of the classic view of, of turn-based combat. And talk a bit about the combat here, because you guys have made some pretty cool changes to how this system works. Yeah, it looks familiar to uh, people who played Battle Chasers, but it really is vastly different. And the most significant addition is what you see at the bottom, which is the, the lane system, uh, which gives you... Well, actually, there are two components to it. One, the player can actually change the speed of their attack to move them forward or uh, backward in the timeline with a functional effect. The middle lane, the balance lane, is a, a nice balance between speed and, and power. If you need to pull off an attack quickly, you can move into the, the speed lane and you'll potentially move ahead uh, of another actor in the scene, but at the cost of some of the ability's power. And if you just need to hit hard or heal hard, you can go down into the power lane. 
which is going to take more time to cast, but has a much more much more dramatic effect. You can also see on the initiative bar that blue box, I see the, uh, the lanes, that blue box there is uh, a hazard or a boon. Those get applied sometimes randomly, sometimes because of something that a creature does um, in the course of battle. And when it gets to the end of the timeline, anything that is inside that box will be affected by it, whether it's an AOE damage attack or it could be a heal, it could be a, a, a buff to, to your crit chance. Uh, so it adds a real element of strategy because now you have to think about not just whether you want to, to hit harder or move more quickly, but where you're going to end up in relation to those into the, in those hazards. So it plays, I would say, we've called it like a, a, a puzzle combat yeah. system yeah. in it the past to try and describe how strategic it is, Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is really what makes it significantly different than Battle Stations, which yeah. is a little more traditional to the old school JRPGs. Each of the champs has a unique dungeon skill that they can use, and if it's used on a creature, it'll, it'll initiate combat. So Yasuo hit him with, uh, with his tornado and threw him straight into combat. And those will have different effects. It might slow the enemy down. It might start you, in Alawi's case, when she you, hits with her tentacle, she'll start combat with, uh, with one tentacle spawned, and that's kind of her trick. Each each of the champs uh, has some some sort of hook to try and uh, make them interesting in combat, but also to call back to you know who they are in, in League of Legends, the the core game. Right. Braum is concussion. Every time you hit, it puts a stack of of concussive blow on, and after a while, enough build up, and it'll stun the creature. Uh, but once that's on there, other champs can help contribute to that once it's been applied. Um, so you can yeah, if you have a lot of Alawi's tentacles up. Every time they smack, they're adding to that stack and getting, building to the stun more quickly. It's pretty... Yeah, and, and there are a lot of examples of, of synergy like that between the champs for players to play with. And this is our art and animation at its finest with the, with the alts. Yeah. So how many alts are there for each champion? Each champ has three, and in each champ's case, we tried to make sure that one of them was a call to... To League of Legends. To the, yeah. the alt in, mm -hmm. in, in League of Legends. Uh, but one of the things that was it was really uh, an interesting challenge too was it's a JRPG, but it's got to have its you got to have your roles right. You need uh, you need party members who will skew yeah, tank and will you need healing. Yeah. And there wasn't a lot of it. when we picked these six champs, um, we didn't necessarily have the one that stood out as like oh this this character is a this champ is a healer yeah. in League of Legends. Um, so it was fun to actually get to evolve some of these champs in a new way and you know because allow you really reads as a tank. Yep. Braum obviously reads as a tank, but being able to make uh, Alawi a healer was yeah. kind of fun. I will admit, I love seeing your take on some enemies that we've seen before in the world of Rune Terror as well. I remember one of the first concepts okay. you did for the Razor Fin. The Razor oh, yeah. Fin. And it yeah. was the most hulked out Razor Fin I've ever seen. I think we, if we go, it's the one at the top here. On top on the left. Yeah. 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 This the Mysteria is, makes it fun. This to, Razor to Finn find him, has find been hitting things. the gym and is ripped. And yeah. I'm like, no, this is Joe Mad's <laughs> take on our Razor Fins. And that's what I love yeah. seeing in the enemies. It's like, like, are they kind of like a rat kind of thing? What if it has rat like dog? a shark face? <laughs> yeah. I, is, I remember the first time we saw that and we were like, these I enemies like, are going to oh, no, be so is, cool. Yeah, this that is was exactly the first why we wanted to work with you. But seeing like Joe, you realize our champs and our you know enemies and what, like through your style is just exciting yeah. for me. I think it's going to be exciting for players too. I think so. Yeah, and uh, to be honest, you know, even before I learned a lot about League, like the game, I had always been a fan of just the art. I, and League of Legends and Riot has some of the best artists in the world, mm -hmm. and I've always just followed them. And so I was already like kind of influence personally and I know a lot of our team like Ryan mentioned they're just league players yeah. so uh, it, it was just a good marriage of styles like we like the same stuff and we you know like the same art uh, so it, it was like a natural fit it, it was not a stretch by any means to you know tr work on these characters it was new territory for me and I, I was I think unaware of just first I was blown away when I heard there were 140 champs we had to pick from, or more than that, I think, at the time. And somehow we had to pick yeah. just six. <laughs> yeah. We were relieved when we realized, well, hey, they don't all have to be playable. You know, you can fight some of them, too. And those are some of our coolest boss fights uh, when you get to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with another with another league champ. Uh, yeah, it's, I was initially overwhelmed, but um, it's been nice getting to know a little bit more about this world that has so much untapped storytelling potential. Yeah. I do think too, like flip side, there was a benefit to us coming in and like having to learn a lot of it. Cause mm -hmm. I think 
that the game is very approachable. People have asked, you know, I don't like really know the story of League of Legends. I don't know these champs. Like, am I going to be lost? And you're not, because part of the the beauty there is that we had to learn a lot about it, and so I think it's presented in a way that that a, a new player can can also like familiarize yeah. themselves with it, yeah. like like we had to do. And on the Easter egg front, I'm excited for players who really know it best, the little props hiding around, the names of some of the NPCs, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to get it. And I think it's good. they're going to feel a little extra special yeah. I mean, knowing I that when they see there's it. There's over 100 lore drops in the game. Yeah, there's we, a lot of reading in this game. There's a lot <laughs> of depth and Easter eggs there for the players that want to go and lift up, you know, every carpet and look in every barrel. Yeah, I, I really honestly see Rune King as a love letter to, you know, storytelling and the lore from our, you know, from Rune Terror in our world. And I hope our community and fans see it that way too. So Rune King's out today. Have you got any tips for players that are gonna start digging in? There is a pretty robust tutorial system. So if you're, if you're a skipper, if you don't skip, it will help. <laughs> Don't skip, um, don't skip the tutorial. Yeah. Uh, don't don't underestimate the val the value and importance of being in the right spot on in the lanes. Mm -hmm. Use the speed lane. Use the power lane. Probably the biggest tip uh, I would give anyone who's playing on anything but story mode is in the top right corner. You'll see in a in a fight. Often the creatures have some sort of quirk that makes them um, more difficult to to battle. You can't just go up and punch them in the face. They'll have some trick like the, the Razorfin up there, for example, has a high chance to evade because of a, a buff he's got on him. But if you attack him with a speed lane attack, it'll knock that buff off. And a lot of the creatures have something like that that okay. makes them uniquely challenging. And so read those tooltips in the top right corner. Pay attention to the creature you're fighting and use the, use the lane system uh, to its full effect. And yeah, you'll, you'll have a much easier go of it than if you ignore that stuff. You're gonna find some of the fights to be very difficult. I would add too, you know, try different character and party makeup. You know, mm. a lot of the characters have synergies with each other that you may discover. Um, everyone has their favorites, but it, it definitely changes the flow of combat depending on who uh, you're using in your party. So once you unlock the six, just mix and match and, and see who, who your favorites are. Okay, we have to talk about the Ruin King. Viego is, he's our namesake for the game. The game is called Ruin King. Um, he's our big bad. So early on when we had established Bilgewater and the Shadow Isles as like the threat to Bilgewater um, and we're uh, figuring out who is the main bad guy uh, in this game and you uh, actually were like, hey, well, there's this character. <laughs> we never really did anything yeah. with it. There's an item in the game called Blade of the Rowan King, but we don't have a Rowan King. Uh, That's how Rowan earned the nickname Rowan King. Yeah, oh, he's yeah. the Rowan King. <laughs> My favorite uh, meme from Dev. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, many players here probably don't know that, you know, the Rowan King's an idea that's been kicking around Riot for a little while. And, and I felt like this is a great opportunity to like realize him at his full maximum power level in, you know, an RPG and watch him do his thing. And then, you know, it fits great with your style and it was vibing on all the things you were looking for. So. Yeah, and yeah, as soon as we learned more about him, it, it was just like a perfect fit. Perfect. And then yeah. there was a lot of cross collaboration there, not just between uh, you guys and Forge, but also you know for the team over on uh, League of Legends for Summoner's Rift to eventually you know realize what went on to become Viego in Summoner's Rift. The genesis of that started mm -hmm. back with Forge and with you know Ruin King the RPG. So, and seeing him uh, go live in League of Legends was awesome for the team though. Yeah. It really felt obviously special to us seeing him come to life and... and yeah, I mean, the visuals mostly came from you guys. Obviously it was a collaboration, yeah. but I think Joe was the first one to visualize him in his form. Yeah, and it was funny because we were kind of going in tandem and so we would do some stuff that the, the League team was like, ooh, we're gonna do that. And then they would do some stuff mm -hmm. that we're like, ooh, we're putting that in the game. Can I get more of those VFX shots <laughs> yeah. or whatever? I remember sitting around waiting for, you know, you guys to give us some info on what you were planning to do with this kit. And then, yeah, yeah. you know, Steve, the combat lead, translating that into, you know, his attacks in yeah, yeah. Rune King. But then also that was a fun back and forth. That yeah. we could go above and beyond what they were doing on the kit for Summoner's Rift because you guys aren't mm -hmm. bound by Summoner's Rift. Yeah. We can do, an you RPG. know. And I feel like that different flavor that you've got as well, like Ruined King in League is a little more smolder. He's a little more romantic. Uh, Ruined King, for you know us, it's Old Testament. 
he's wrathful and yeah. powerful it's and he bitter. Will, he's and he's going to crush you. And <laughs> yeah. I really like seeing that different interpretation that you know you guys have versus uh, the league version. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So the game is out today. Super excited for everyone to play. Um, any final thoughts to share with our players? This first time we've done this type of release. I think everybody, you know, just speaking as a game developer, we're so accustomed to the typical announce the game, sort of traditional marketing run up to release, pre-orders, all that stuff. The idea that we get to stealth launch or sudden launch like this is, it's it's refreshing because yeah. it's not something that I think a lot of developers get to do. It's typically just surprise players yeah, with it. Surprising <laughs> players with it is, is awesome. So yeah. I'm hoping that players are surprised by it as we were that we were doing this. It's pretty cool. Joe, anything else? Yeah, and no, I would just uh, hope that everyone has fun with the game and and we'll, we look forward to all the feedback and player reactions. We're super excited yep. to to see how people respond and. Just, you know, a shout out to our team that worked really hard on it. Uh, you, I think players will feel the, the hard work and effort and yeah. love that went into making the game. Um, it was definitely a unique challenge and felt like a lot of responsibility working in League of Legends. Uh, and I know the team, they were excited to do it. And I wish we could name every one of them by name, but they've truly put in, uh, you know, they put themselves into the game and, and it shows. Yeah, you can see it. It's like yeah. every, yeah. you know, love and kindness and everything going into the game so i would say thanks from you know our law fans and community for the amount of respect that you guys treated with yeah. holding the characters i think it really comes through in the game thank you guys yeah you helped with that <laughs> <laughs> a partnership yeah well thank you guys for spending the time with rowan and i to chat about room king uh, we are super excited it is out today so go and play and have a lot of fun i know we will be so thank you so much for joining us Welcome back. Next up, Rowan and I are very excited to have Choice Provisions come and chat to us about Hextech Mayhem, a League of Legends story. So I'd love to welcome to the stage Alex Noisy and Mike Rouse come and chat to us. Hey. Hi, guys. Hi. What's up? How are you guys doing? It's so exciting welcome. for you to be here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're totally stoked to be here. And the game's out today. You can play it today. Yes. I'm so excited. It is out to today. It's amazing. It is out today. I will be playing it tonight. We've yep. been playing it for so long. Now everyone else can play it. I know. <laughs> yeah. And everyone else can get so much better at it we, than I am. Un yeah. Until today, we were the best players in the world at the game. Right. And that is now no longer true as of 20 minutes. Of uh, <laughs> we, we believe this to be the yeah, case. And we actually talk about this quite often in the studio. How, how, how quick will it be before people uh, 100 percent this game. In, instant, oh, better than us. Yeah. Better than us. <laughs> better than oh, us. Way better. They are already better than us right now. So talking about your guys' DNA, um, Bitrip Runner, obviously that's your guys' baby. What did you take from from that into Hextech Mayhem? Bitrip Runner, Runner 2, and Runner 3, of course, are we call them rhythm platformers. Yeah. Right. I would put the emphasis on rhythm for those games. But for Hextech Mayhem, we wanted it to be a little bit more than just rhythm. And so it's, we call it a musical game <laughs> now. So it is much more musical. So in Hextech Mayhem, you're not only playing to the beat and in sync with the beat, you're also playing along with the melody, um, the, the verses, the, the chorus, the bridge, and all of the, it's, it's much more, I guess, of a holistic, of the musical, a holistic musical, musical game, yeah. With Hextech Mayhem, we introduce this thing, when you do things off prompt, there are all kinds of extra things that you can do between the prompts. So we've got the prompts showing up on screen, and then in between them, if, you're, if you've got a keen eye and a keen ear, you can tune into the music, do an extra input for extra points, and that's the only way that you're gonna get competitive ranks. And when you do it correctly, the whole screen is just basically a ball of explosions. Yeah, which is very which, fitting for Ziggs. <laughs> yes, which is fitting for Ziggs. Very this was one of your things from the beginning was like he needs to feel just essentially out of control if we did it right which i think we did here's where the explosions and the chaos are too much and here's where we want you to be it's like right just there on yeah the, just on just the <laughs> where you're starting to feel like oh my god what am i what is going on can i can i even handle this is this too much is this is, too much but it, no it, it never is quite too much we're working with your IP. Mm -hmm. This is not our own invention, so we want to do it right, um, represent it well, um, 
not only just represent it correctly, but actually do it, mm -hmm. and I will you know, say, really well. Uh, Ziggs made that very easy I mean, for us. I mean, yeah. Ziggs is amazing. Yes. You guys have amazing. got Ziggs on lock. The, like, it's the yeah. voiceover in this game is just... Uh, oh God, Rowan and I were talking the about it, and is... you're just playing it and chuckling because yeah. because the one-liners and the dialogue and, and Ziggs' responses are just hilarious. I never knew how much I wanted to hear Ziggs and Heimerdinger yell at each other. Yeah, like yeah. that banter is just and amazing. The banter feels really <laughs> Especially in the boss battles. There are a couple lines that, even though I've played them a thousand times, I still laugh, you know, uh, during those boss battles. You know, we know Ziggs and Heimerdinger from uh, League of Legends, and just seeing them outside of that in a different yeah. scenario, um, I'm really excited to see Together what... Together in a story. They feel like what I would imagine two hot-headed yordles <laughs> getting all uppity with each other would feel, uh, yeah. would feel like. The cutscenes are super fun. The code name <laughs> for the game uh, was JFG which stood for Joyful Fun Game. And that was really our guiding light. Was, that was our goal, is to make a, you know something that's uh, fun, explosive, keeps a smile on your face the whole time. And that's sort of our studio's goal, is making games that just uh, make the player smile. And uh, you know it's the point of a, a video game, in our opinion. League of Legends takes itself very seriously. Mm -hmm. um, but our studio, and <laughs> yeah. in particular, Mike and myself we don't are, we are the opposite. Don't of, of take that. things too seriously, and we're very silly and wacky. And we sort of got to explore Ziggs and Heimerdinger uh, without the seriousness yeah. that comes with League of Legends. Mm. Um, in Tech Tech Mayhem, the difficulty is there if you want to opt into it. But the base difficulty and sort of maybe what I would call the the primary game experience is all prompted uh, like, a, like a Guitar Hero or a DDR or something like that, yeah. where you know exactly what you have to do and when you have to do it. And if you want to play the game, only doing that, you're still going to get the full game experience and it's going to be great and you're going to be vibing and nodding your head and tapping your foot and all that. But then after you beat the game, you unlock these other modes. There's the full action mode, which shows you every single prompt. So that's the normally prompted ones plus the freestyle mayhem ones. So um, it, fill, it fills the screen. Yeah, it fills the screen. Yeah. It, it, it's totally it's like extreme difficulty. <laughs> of course, if you want the ultimate challenge, insane yeah. challenge, yeah. we have impossible mode, yeah. which is no prompts. Yeah. So you have to play the game, uh, listen to the music to discern what you need to do, uh, and look at the visuals, because there are plenty of visual cues even without the prompts, but you have to be able to recognize them. And yeah. so when you're playing impossible mode and you're good at it, yeah. it's it is look it's bananas. Look cool, then I think we should probably like get up some gameplay and take a look at it. Yeah. Cool, can you just chat us through the level, Alex? Yeah, sure. Um, so what we're looking at right now is sort of the normal mode. The player here is following the prompts and that's all they're doing. And you can see Ziggs is bounding through the level, blowing stuff up. He is running past a lot of the Wardens, not interacting with them, just sort of letting them laze around or, or try to get him. Um, I do love all the Wardens' little actions, though, and they, they have their like, little personalities. And you can see right there, that just happened uh, with some bottle rockets. Uh, that's one of the um, gimmicks that Ziggs uses to wreak havoc. Um, and cause mayhem. Uh, and so as you watch this playthrough, you'll notice like there, Ziggs just missed that white oh, uh, yeah. oh, uh, yeah, gizmo yeah. and Ziggs is missing these orange gizmos. That's because those are off the prompted path. Now, the majority of items are on the prompted path, uh, but uh, but if you really want to excel at the game, you're going to have to do some stuff. You would have to do all of them at the same time. That's you right. Know. <laughs> yeah, some, some unscripted, uh, okay. some unscripted inputs. And what's the difference between the the blue and the yellow cogs? So the uh, the the blue cogs, uh, we call them gizmos. Uh, they help Ziggs to build his whammer jammer, <laughs> and his whammer jammer is the bomb that Ziggs is telling Heimerdinger is gonna be the best bomb ever. It's, it's a very sophisticated invention. Yes, the yeah. biggest bomb. It's the biggest bomb he's ever created. <laughs> yeah. And he's very proud of the idea. It's very complicated, sophisticated. Yep. Yeah. It's for jamming whams or yeah. whamming jams. Jammers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and Heimerdinger is not having any of it. Uh, but so the blue cogs you collect to build 
the Whammer Jammer, which is then what you ride into battle against Heimerdinger in the boss battles. So that's kind of the goal of the game, is to build this big bomb and, you it's know. To, it's for Zig to build his biggest bomb ever, and uh, in retaliation, Heimerdinger creates an invention of his own. Nice. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the white cogs, uh, which you mentioned as well, Rowan, those allow you to buy extra costumes. costumes. Yes. Costumes skins. for Zig. Skins, skins. Which are very fun. Yeah. Let's uh, talk a little bit about the skins. Yeah. Uh, well, we have uh, uh, a bunch of skins in the game mm -hmm. um, that uh, reflect League's IP quite nicely, yeah. I, I believe. Um, and uh, like Alex said, they're purchasable by the white do doodads that are off path. Each skin has its own suite of uh, effects and special animations. When you play with one of the costumes on, it, it looks different because all of the explosions, all the effects are different yep. and everything. And I so love that. it just has a different flavor. Okay, so this one is a little bit more difficult. So what's the what's the difference in this level compared to the more regular one we just looked at? Right. In this one, you'll see uh, that the player here is doing some of the off prompt actions. Mm. So you'll notice um, a lot of the times when they collect the orange gizmos, they're throwing a bomb here, right? And it's all synced to the music, of course, um, and prompted by the music, but it's all optional. So the player here is opting in to some of the extra stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm noticing that they're not opting into everyone because yeah. you see all the Hextech um, objects there that are glowing blue. Mm -hmm. Those indicate freestyle mayhem opportunities. Okay. And so you want to destroy all of those glowing blue Hextech uh, level elements yeah. uh, this, as you're going through. This player the seems pretty mayhem. comfortable with inserting extra bomb throws, but they're not really doing all of them and they're missing some of the pounds and jumps as well. That's right, yeah, because yeah. there are optional moves, all the moves. Which feels good. And I started out kind of doing um, like warden runs. I was trying to uh, get as many wardens as I could. That was like sort of my introduction to the. Um, I mean, to, that feels like a noble quest for Zeke. I, yeah. it was I agree. A very noble. Yeah. I agree. Uh, and it's funny because you get the the unique animations quite quite often. The silly wardens silly warden yeah. versus the, the screen or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then wow, the crescendo at the end. That, uh, yeah. We tried to uh, respect Ziggs as much as possible by making it uh, as explosive as we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the end of each level pretty much ends with a big bang. Yeah. This is, again, why Ziggs is amazing, because yeah. if all else fails, just blow something exactly. up. Exactly. Yeah. And the way he does it yep. is always funny. <laughs> He's cute. He's really cute. Oh, well, now here, okay, yeah. the challenger uh, run, oh, yeah. the only way you can get a challenger rank is by doing everything. It's it's 100%. Yes. Right? It's, like, not, it's yeah. not 99%. 99.9. Like, to get challenger, you <laughs> yes. have to perfect a level. Mm -hmm. You have to perfect the levels. So they're doing extra jumps. They're doing extra pounds. They're yeah. doing extra throws, all of it. But this is optional as well, right? Yeah. With Challenger, yeah. Yep, uh, and, totally optional. And this player is sight reading all of the, the level elements, right? To, so mm -hmm. that they know where to, like they're listening to the song yes. and they're reading like all of the, the gizmos on the screen to be able to get Challenger. That's right, yeah. Um, and this is what a Challenger run looks like. Um, and this is a relatively early on level. This is maybe on the front half. Uh, yeah, this it's not is... quite halfway through the game. Hey, look, there's hey. Jinx. Oh, Jinx. Yay. there's Jinx. Yeah. She's a, she's a Can we call jumper. it Zinx? Zinx. You know, we yes. thought about that. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah. Look at that. It's, it's so, cool. so cute. It's amazing. I know. And you guys have seen Arcane, the television series? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. There are some things for the player to discover that directly references Arcane. Cool. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see uh, if the players see it and, and their uh, reaction to that. Now here is impossible. Yes, now this is the yeah, chaos mean, and, one. And this is crazy. Um, I think it's just beautiful. Yeah. I mean, you don't have the prompts and if you are at this level where you're able to do this, yes. it is literally like playing a musical instrument yeah. in my opinion. It is, it, it, it really is like playing a musical instrument and I'm glad that you said it that way. I would not have said it that way, but you're right. It's impressive to watch. Can you talk a bit about you know the art style here? Because you know the levels are just very gorgeous. Part of it was easy because uh, Piltover in the League world is so well defined. Mm -hmm. um, but we really wanted to throw our spin and our taste on it, um, have it be Piltover and Zon from our point of view. Um, and we also Ziggs has that cartoony feel mm -hmm. uh, to him, so we wanted to 
represent that with uh, the way we uh, modeled, our, the way our characters look, our animations, the way they, there's a lot of stretching in the anims, a lot of goofiness in our, mm. our animation. Like you said, it's your interpretation of Piltover, so there's no, you know, the lines aren't straight on the buildings, and right. some of the buildings are kind of bopping up and down in the background yeah. in time with them mm. B. Like it, it feels like there's personality in the world, which yeah. just feels like your guys' stuff. So is there anything else you want to share with players about Hextech Mayhem? Uh, I think I'd just say have fun and get into the... Joyful fun. Have joyful fun. <laughs> and uh, that's sort of our studio motto. motto uh, to um, I'll let you say it because you say it so often. Get in the zone and ride the vibe. Yeah. Hey, I love that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Alex. You're the best. Thanks so much for having Cheers, us. Cheers, guys. Thank you, Leon. Thanks. Thanks so much for tuning in, everyone. That is everything that we have today. But Hextech Mayhem and Rune King are out today, so please play them and have fun. They are awesome games. And we'll be sharing more about our other games soon.